Hello, this is the demonstration of the copper oxide experiment where you find the empirical formula of copper oxide by carrying out a reduction with methane gas. Uh, you need to use the, one of these special test tubes, it's got a little hole in the top there which the gas can be allowed to escape from. And then, first thing we need to do is check the balance is zero. We can then weigh the test tube empty. We then have to add a couple of spatulafuls of the copper oxide to the tube, as carefully as we can. And try to get the copper oxide into the centre of the tube, again, as best you can. Um, when you're quite happy, you can reweigh it and record the results appropriately in your results table. You then take the copper oxide in our tube here and we clamp it. And you can just see we need to try and get copper oxide further down the tube a bit to get it away from the mouth of the clamp stand and also we need to just keep it away from the hole as well. Clamp it in just like that. Try and use a clamp stand that has not got any cork or rubber uh, grips on the jaws there because you tend to find that they catch light as this gets very hot. We then connect the tube that's going to deliver the methane gas onto our test tube there with the hole in and then we turn on the gas tap and we feel for the methane passing over and then we carefully set light, make sure the hole is pointed upwards and if you're obviously letting the students do this you need to make sure or just keep an eye on the size of flame that appears and the direction in which it goes. Oops, there we go. Once you've got that aligned, you can then use the gas tap to control the height of the flame. And generally, about that sort of height will work fine. Next thing we need to do once that is going is to heat the copper oxide in the tube. Uh, we need a second Bunsen, so you need to make sure your gas taps are all working nicely. Then let's just set that up like so. Okay. It is quite common at this point that students will then put the air hole on, manage to extinguish the flame like so. It is possible just to quickly, as long as you haven't turned the gas off, reignite it quite easily. So there we leave the experiments heating, if that gets as hot as we can. Um, if you're not too happy about the height you can quite simply just adjust this down onto the hottest part of the Bunsen burner flame. It usually takes about five minutes or so for that to react. Once all the copper oxide has been reduced to copper and you've got the distinctive uh, pinky red colour all the way along and you've moved the Bunsen along to check it's all reacted, you need to switch off the Bunsen and obviously you need to be very careful that you're grabbing the right gas tap. Because there is a danger here that you grab the wrong one and you can actually turn that flame going through the tube even higher. So you just need to be very careful to make sure you're turning off the right one. Obviously the tube is very hot. The copper is still very hot. It's not the time now to be turning off the gas that's passing it over. Uh, if you do that, you'll start to get oxygen going back into the tube and recombining. 
with the copper to form copper oxide and obviously that will bring in errors into the experiments. The other thing is you're going to have to wait about maybe five or so minutes and just check at the end of the tube that it's safe to actually hold. Once it's safe for them to hold you can then tell them to switch off the gas and then you can then take that over and reweigh it again.